Welcome back to another session of IC Layout. Today we are going to look at full custom IC Layout design. You can start to do your own uh, cell layout. So uh, we'll teach you some techniques to creating your layout. We're going to break this session up into two parts. The first part we'll look at the floor planning. And then the second part, we'll look at the stick diagrams. In IC layout, it's very important that we plan our layout first before we go to the computer to draw the actual layout. This will save us much time if we do our planning right. Hey, the in full custom layout, the circuit schematics need to be translated into geometric patterns on the different process layers to be manufactured in a wafer foundry. So you basically will be drawing polygons like this of different colors to represent the, the different process layers that are going to be manufactured in a wafer foundry. Now, the, these geometric patterns represent semiconductor devices and their connections. Okay, the steps in IC layout design. First step, the, we need to have the final schematics from the designers. And then, we first create the floor plan of our layout. Next, we create the stick diagram. Then we add the geometrical dimensions, such as width, spacing, and other uh, values based on the IC layout rules, design rules. And finally, we use the EDA tools to draw the IC layout. So the, we'll bring you through this process. You will have a better idea at the end of it all. So in the end, you get your I see layout. Okay, floor plan. That was the first step. So in the floor plan, you're, you're indicating the relative placement of the input, output, and power and ground locations. So you look over here, you have your IOs or input and output points. So your signals will either come in here or, or and go out there and vice versa. So these are the IO locations. So your floor plan indicate the relative I input output locations. It also indicate where you're going to place your power and your ground bus. Okay. Okay. The cells are defined by the pitch and a var and the var uh, fixed pitch and a variable with x. So the pitch is the measured from the midway point of the ground line to the midway point of the power line. So the pitch is fixed, but the width is varied depending on the function of the cell. The power and the ground lines to end the end well must abut nicely with the neighboring cells. Okay, normally the VDD and VSS lines are supplied by horizontal metal one lines. And this li power lines and ground lines must be wide enough to accommodate, accommodate contacts of VRs. Okay, as I said, the pitch early on is the spacing between the VDD and ground lines. The, the, the active areas is provided around the VDD rail 
the, sorry, the end well is provided around the VDD well, uh, rail. That means you have your end well and then you have VDD inside your end well. VMOS transistors are the place in the end well. NMOS transistors are supposed to be placed in the P substrate. The width x is variable depending on the complexity of the logic. The input output ports are placed along the top and bottom to provide connection points for interconnect wiring to the other cells. Okay. We shall stop here. Now next after the break, we shall come back to stick diagrams.